Good morning, everyone. We have been talking about the major promises of God, what God has promised us. There are many things the Father has promised us. Again, if you start in Genesis, go all the way through Revelation, you always find the promises of God, sometimes in almost every word. Promises of life, promises of judgment, promises of life after death. The Father continually, continuously gives us these promises. And so I'm wrapping this up with what I believe are four of God's major promises to us. Of course, salvation is a given, given all the things that we've talked about so far. But then, too, there's the promise of forgiveness, the promise of mercy. Today, we get to a big one. The promise of justice. Now, as we begin this, we have to understand a couple things. There are two words that almost always go together in Scripture. They are righteousness and justice. Righteousness and justice. I've come to the opinion that this about this. Righteousness is about me and you. What God has done in our lives, he has made us righteous. He has atoned us. We have the righteousness of Christ about us. That's individual righteousness. Justice is about the community. What happens in the community? Is it just? Is it right? Because often in Scripture, you'll find that the authors and translators have often used the same word. So you wouldn't have justice, justice, or righteousness, righteousness. But one would be justice. The other one would be righteousness. I have burned in my head, in my memory, if you will, the wonderful verse from Amos 5, 2. And most of us as Americans are familiar with it because Dr. King quoted it in the March on Washington speech. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Understand there, justice, community, righteousness, like us. Where's that ever-flowing stream come from? It comes from us because we have in us the living water of Christ. But here's a few more familiar verses for us. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, says Jesus, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Micah 6, 8. He's told you, O man, what is good? What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Oh my. Go on. Matthew 12, 18 and 19. Behold my servant, 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 whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit in him, and he shall proclaim justice to the Gentiles, and the battered reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You tithe um, the mint, dillman, and cumin, but you neglect the weightier things of the law. Justice, mercy, faithfulness. But of these things you should have done without neglecting the others. Now why bring those verses up? because they're important to us. Because the Father says, I am a God of justice. It is He. He is a God of justice, mercy, and righteousness. And therefore, He expects us to be His persons. That's why righteousness is about you and I. Justice is about the community. That the community does well together because we're acting rightly. What's our job then? Well, it says this that we should take care of the widow, the poor, and the orphan. We don't overjudge the poor. We don't take advantage of the rich by siding with them. One verse was so, so wonderful. It says this, don't side with the rich and don't go and, and side with them as a malicious witness. Instead, speak justice, truth. Now, in our going on right now, a week ago, still going on now, there's a whole issue with Kanye West. What's our response as Christians to be righteous? 
righteousness means in me, then I've got to speak truth to that. The truth to that is that what he is saying is not true. These two are our cousins, our brothers and sisters. God loves them as he loves you and I. Now, what do we do with justice? The justice end of that is we speak truth to that and we stand against it. Why? Because we know that the Father has made us equal. What does Paul tell us? Colossians, Ephesians, in Christ Jesus, there is no Scythian, barbarian, Jew, Gentile. Therefore, we stand there in righteousness, justice. We speak out against those things. Why? Because that is what the Father expects us to do. Now, here's two examples of putting justice to work because of righteousness. Now, I've talked about Kanye. That's something we, sh we should all do within our own context. But here's two more. The first one is this one. There's a wonderful judge by the name of Frank Caprio. He has a wonderful reputation, even sometimes is on TV. But this day, he made a startling judgment for people. What was his judgment? Well, he has before him a mom with two children. And so mom has a debt she cannot pay. And she says, it's not my fault. So she explains, why is this going on? Well, her car was parked in the wrong spot because she didn't want her car to get hit because it's a bad neighborhood. She goes up, does her business in the house, comes out, well, the people won't let her out because the police are there. So not only does she have a $100 fine, now she's got a $200 ticket, and that price just keeps ratcheting up if you ever had a ticket. Now you've got to pay court costs, all of that. The judge does something strange. He calls her daughter up and asks her, help me fix the, fig, figure this out. So the mother again explains, the daughter listens, the judge and the daughter, her six-year-old, keep talking. And the judge says, okay, here, here's four options for you. One, impose the $300 in penalties plus the $200. Then, or impose the original fine, or cut it in half. Pay nothing and dismiss the charges. The little girl says, well, she's got to pay something. Now, here's where justice takes part. The judge says, you know, you've been here all morning. He says, yes. Did you have breakfast? No. Would you like to have breakfast? Yes. So the judge looks at mom and says, I tell you what, if you take her to breakfast, I'll dismiss the charges. Mom took the kids to breakfast. Justice. For something that shouldn't happen to help people because of community. Righteousness in action is justice. The second one likened unto that is a story about uh, the mayor of New York, LaGuardia. LaGuardia goes to night court and decides that he wants to sit in judgment. So the judge lets him sit in judgment. Judge goes home, the mayor can do this, it's night court, it's no big deal. Well, before him comes a woman who has stolen a loaf of bread. He says, did you steal a loaf of bread? Yes, I did. Why did you steal the loaf of bread? Well, your honor, I had to feed my grandchildren. They're hungry, the mother is ill, the dad has left them, they have no money, I have no money. So I stole the loaf of bread. He talks to the store owner. Well, what do you think about this? The store owner goes, she must pay justice. I need my pound of flesh. She must pay. The judge looks at her and says, okay, how much was a loaf of bread? 350. The judge takes out his hat and puts five dollars in it. And then he passes the hat amongst the courtroom. They collect about 50 bucks. The judge says to the store owner, take your 395. Case is dismissed. Gives the woman the rest of the money. Why? Because that was justice. How do I pay for the sin of this person? That's what Jesus did for us. He paid for our sin and made it right and then gave us riches, his blessings, leftover money to the woman to feed her family. That is righteousness 
and justice in action. The Father calls us to do that exact same thing. What is required of you, O man? Hmm. To do justice, to act righteously, and walk humbly before your God. Jesus, thank you for the wonderful gift of justice. Now, Father, help us to walk in it and give it away in practical acts of love and mercy. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.